So let's ask the question, why has Robert not got a massive following? TV pundit, dog trainer, stroke dog behaviourist he likes to call himself. And he loves to go onto these news programmes when something goes wrong and talks about dog training and how people are failing as dog trainers. This is the same guy who said that uh, he would like to smack Victoria Stilwell in the mouth. I wonder what people like GB News, BBC, ITV would actually say if they heard it coming from his own mouth. I wonder if they put him on TV and say, let's listen to a dog expert. This is the guy from Dog Borstal. This is the same guy that gets dragged onto the news and gets asked questions about his expertise in dog training. He hasn't had a dog for 15 years. On a totally lighter note, we're going to talk about dogs. Apparently, cuddles and a healthy dose of love are the only ingredients needed to raise a well-behaved dog. A new study shows that dog owners should never punish their dogs and instead only use positive training methods. Experts from the University of Bristol found that the use of aversive techniques damage the relationship between pet and owner. Totally false. I guarantee it. And also increase the dog's chances of becoming anxious or depressed. Absolute garbage. Say it the way it is. But is this the right way to raise a man's best friend and a woman's best friend? In today's climate, that could be classed as sexist. Joining me now to give us his expert advice is a friend of the programme, dog trainer Rob Allen. Well, so I read this this morning as a serial dog owner, and I am the father of sons who are serial dog owners as well, and I just kind of drooped in disbelief. Am I wrong? <laughs> um, listen, there are so many things that you and I, I'm sure, would absolutely agree on in theory. And absolutely in theory, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could raise our children, raise our pets, just by giving them nothing but love and affection? We've seen how well that's worked with our children in the last generation. They've all gone feral. It just hasn't worked out. So what are you saying, Robert? Are you saying that all children are feral? What about the ones who've been brought up with structure and they know limitations and they got rules and boundaries? Or is it the ones that have been pampered, allowed to get on with it, not been disciplined, not, not been corrected when they've got, gone wrong, not been told they've gone wrong through fear of upsetting their little tiny weeny selves? I think you're half telling a story, Robert, not the full story. But you are a storyteller. Because the problem is a reward only works for as long as you want that reward more than anything else. Yes. As soon as you want something else, it then doesn't work. And we've seen this catastrophe in the same period happen with our children. It's also happened with our dogs. Yeah. The numbers of dogs going into rescue now are at unprecedented levels. The average age of a dog now finding itself in rescue is apparently only eight months. And isn't it interesting that it's as they start to hit puberty, they end up in rescue. Because oh, I didn't that, know that. Like a, a, a yeah. direct echo of, as it were, human development yeah. and canine. How extraordinary. Absolutely. That part of the interview, I totally agree with. When we're training, mean, we've recently taken delivery um, uh, of uh, a, a new rescue dog, um, Lily, absolutely gorgeous, uh, boxer, mm -hmm. Labrador cross. It came from ghastly circumstances in Greece. A friend of ours runs a charity that does it. That's what you've been told. Is that why you reached out and rescued it? Were you being duped? And um, so we had to train Lily pretty well from the word go. And we had a pamphlet from the charity that said, you be absolutely firm, you do the reward thing, but if something goes wrong, doesn't you don't hit them, but you are absolutely firm. It's not, oh, look, sit down, Lily. Can we try and negotiate your behaviour? I mean, that is just tosh, isn't it? The simple answer is absolute tosh. Well, the thing is, with that Bristol University report, what they did was they compared positive reinforcement with really very draconian forms of aversion and punishment. And of course, what they found was, not surprisingly, the dogs preferred the reward. So that what they then did was throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, OK, well, then all punishment is bad. And that wasn't the case at all. And in fact, many surveys, many research articles of research 
have shown that actually, if you use a balance of positive reinforcement... The Roberts sales pitch. The lie. The total fabrication of the truth. And minimal levels of aversion. Playing with words again, Robert. Minimal. The least possible to gain victory. The dog actually becomes less stressed and learns more quickly. So why didn't you use the same format for the dog on the balcony, Robert? The pit bull on the balcony. We'll get to this in a minute. So we've just gone too far the other way. And there's a thing that I put on social media not very long ago where I said, why is it I don't know a single genuinely, supposedly positive only trainer who has what I would consider to be a well-behaved dog? Not one, and I know hundreds. Love that bit, Robert. So true. And yet you've just thrown three quarters of your clients and their way of training and your friends under the bus because you were one of them, but you've changed your methods because it's not working. And it's because in reality, the dog will frequently choose something else as a reward. It says, I know you've got that piece of chicken. You eat it. I'd rather go and chase the squirrel. I'd rather have fresh sheep or squirrel. And what do you do then? Because you have no competing reward. If you've got a dog with a very high prey drive that, for example, wants to kill sheep, yeah. what reward could you offer it other than another sheep? What about a dog that wants to kill people, Robert? Should we get to the point? Come on, Robert. Go national and tell them about the dog you wanted to throw off the balcony. Or what about if I paid you to tell the story? What about this woman? What about Victoria Steelwell? That's the woman you said you'd like to smack her in the mouth. The real problem is you can't deny it because you've said it. It's out there for the public to hear. But what a thing coming from a dog training guru like yourself. What has she done to you, Robert? Or is it jealousy? A body part, Robert. Throw them a body part instead of a sheep. A bit like the story when you were an animal control officer and you wanted to throw a dog off a seventh floor balcony. Remember that? You said it, not me. Just well, imagine you, actually you told him that story minimal force on the news by going to that extreme, were a struggling Robert. dog trainer and didn't know what to do, Robert. So you decided Unsafe. to... And definitely thinking, unpractical. what body part do I give the dog? And you were beating it with a <clears> catch pole. <throat> beating it with a catch pole. Yeah. Don't run over there. Look, I've got one here. Yeah. But that's where that type of training starts to fall down. So I love the theory of it, yeah. and I consider myself a reward-based trainer. In today's society, you can identify yourself as anything you want. But in reality, there's a reason why dogs are getting worse. Attacks on people, we've never had so many. You're dead right there, Robert. Attacks on people. How many people have you told stories to lately about wanting to punch somebody and had to stop filming when you were in dog borstal? No wonder you've got your eyes shut. You shouldn't be smirking, Robert. It's not funny. Taking a dog off somebody, threatening them, and then saying, I had to stop filming on two occasions because I could have slapped him or punched him, whatever you said. I couldn't believe it when I listened to it. I couldn't believe it. I would have hit him. I had to stop it and I had to walk away else I would have hit him. Attacks on people and dogs, Robert. It's not the dogs we've got to watch out for. It's these... Touchy, touchy film star dog trainers, Victoria Stilwell, thinking she's above everybody else. There's a difference of opinion of not liking someone's training methods or what comes out of their mouth, Robert, but to go after people and threaten people and bully people, that's as bad as the dogs being nasty. You need retraining, Robert. Yeah. And it's because the dogs are out of control, not because they're bad dogs, but because they've had no education. They don't understand that there are consequences to making the wrong choices. And, and as long as we continue with that, it's just going to get worse. Yeah. And that's why, Robert, I've decided to make an example of you. To show you and other people the true Robert Elaine. Smiling, nice guy behind your back is evil and i'm glad you mentioned farmers there as well because several times yeah. in the program we've talked about the dangers of, of human beings not looking after their dogs when they're out in the countryside so here's a great question for you robert minimal force how are you going to stop a, a sheep killing dog what's a farmer going to do he's going to use a gun is that minimal not that i'm blaming the farmers they're being quite direct
<laughs> I will leave you, I will leave you, Rob Allen, with the other profound thought of the day. Oh, am I? Say you wanna be a gangster, tell me just one thing. Do a little. What you know about being a hard man? Cause you haven't got it. Oh. So you might as well quit. So I agreed with so much of what he said in this interview. But he's feeding the media what the media want. And that's what they want. They don't want anybody who says a firm bit of correction at the right time sends a bigger message and a quicker message to the dog and then you're not nagging the dog. He's talking about using slight discipline. Slight discipline doesn't work. It just hardens the dog up. If you put your dog in a great temptation like a gun dog under great pressure, it's not like being in the church hall. It's not like being in your house in a dog park Robert needs to stick to what he knows if Robert knew stuff he wouldn't need to slag off other trainers like he does on a regular basis that's why he's not liked by so-called film stars of the dog training world who are on the internet now because he's bitter and twisted because his career didn't go in the direction he wanted it to go so what he's having to do now he's stabbing in the dark at anybody who's got a following to try and promote himself. So he wants to win back those women who thought he was a positive only trainer. A trainer that didn't use discipline, correction and say no to a dog. When in fact I know exactly how he talks to talk because I spoke to him for a long period of time and I've watched his progress as a trainer. I've not seen any progress because at least in Dog Boston, I know it was edited, you saw him actually working with people and the dogs. If he was good at what he was doing, he'd be putting the videos up. He loves to promote himself. He loves to self-promote himself. And yet he has very little following. And you ask the question, why? Because he's jumped from one camp to another camp. Now, we're all entitled to change our minds. But he's now realising, like we've been saying for a long time, the media is the platform to put your work up and let other people decide. And that's all I'm saying is, put your work up, shut up about talking about other trainers, and let's see what you can do. Because put your money where your mouth is. You might be famous one day if you start doing some magic training that everybody drops every idea they've ever learnt and comes over to you, Robert, because you're a genius. I've seen the people that you're promoting as good dog trainers. They haven't got a clue, Robert. That tells me so much on its own. Anyway, I'm not going to rant because I want people to see the truth about Robert. How about that?